Scary Little Games Arcade and video game manufacturers have been trying to scare us for the last 45 years. The first game that could be considered the granddaddy of all horror-themed games would be the unlicensed Jaws ripoff by the name of Shark Jaws. The game was known initially as Jaws because Atari founder Nolan Bushnell attempted to secure the license as a movie tie-in for the summer blockbuster of the same name, but unfortunately he was unable to do so. He decided to release the title anyway, just changing the name to Shark Jaws. Throughout the aforementioned 45 years, we have seen a number of titles attempt to scare our pants off and make us go wee-wee just a little bit. Other notables included Haunted House for the Atari 2600, Killer. Splatter House. Resident Evil. And the one that gave me the most trouble when it came to closing my eyes and attempting to fall asleep, Mary-Kate and Ashley Magical Mystery Mall. This game gave me both the heebies and the jeebies and should be avoided at all costs. In today's episode, we are going to take a look at the massively successful arcade title, The House of the Dead, which was brought to us by the Wizards at Sega in 1996. What was the original theme of this game? How did the development team decide upon the name? So grab your gun and watch out for the zombies. This is the history of the House of the Dead. In the mid-1990s, Sega were once again proving to be the king of the arcades with a string of successful light gun titles. A few of my favorites that they had produced back in the day included Virtua Cop, Alien 3 The Gun, and the game that was in just about every movie theater and arcade back in the day, Jurassic Park. Sega Amusement Research and Development Department 1 or AM1 as they're known by their friends, have been rumored to be the oldest development division in the company, and they produced a number of successful titles in the 80s and 90s, in particular Die Hard Arcade. A team was put together which included producer Rikiya Nakagawa, and it was directed by Takashi Oda. The goal of the team was to make a light gun game which would be different enough from the other projects being developed by AM2 and AM3. There was a lot of internal competition between the three groups specifically coming down from the higher ups. They wanted each team to push each other to produce the best content they could provide. In the early design phase, the game was going to use a police theme, but the higher-ups at Sega rejected this, feeling it was too similar to Virtua Cop. The team decided on using a horror theme with elements of the supernatural thrown in. Something else to make the game stand out was that it was going to be designed to appeal to adults, which is where a lot of the blood and gore came into play. Mr. Oda has stated in interviews that they did not specifically target children when designing this game because if they would have, they would have lowered the blood and gore and used something like ghosts instead. 
Speaking of ghosts, they were going to do a full-on paranormal theme early on, but decided to go with creatures instead. It was Mr. Oda's decision to refer to the enemies as creatures and not zombies. The reason being is that the creatures have a scientific origin and are not the walking undead. It also didn't help matters that at the time, Marvel Comics owned the trademark to the word zombie, which was registered in 1975 and ran out in late 1996. Something else that would appeal to older gamers was that the protagonists were aged deliberately older than the teens and young adults frequently found in Japanese games. Another major gameplay change that took place was that the creatures were essentially unarmed, meaning they wouldn't be shooting back at you. They would mumble and stumble their way towards you step by step, but their lack of firearms was made up for in their resiliency, as most of them could take at least a few hits. You are armed with a six-shooter, which means you will be constantly having to reload as quickly as possible. To save on time, the team used the Virtua Cop engine, but with some big differences. For example, Virtua Cop was all about precision, while other Sega light gun titles such as Gunblade New York not only offer the use of a machine gun, but also the ability to inflict total carnage on your enemies. AM1 wanted the game to be the best of both worlds. A headshot would take out the enemy straight away, but it was possible to shoot individual limbs off the advancing undead with a clean shot. Something else the development team wanted to include right from the start were the awesome cinematics, which were inspired by movies like Seven and various horror-themed flicks. There's no way out, Kyrian. I must admit, I really respect your consistency. But you will never, ever defeat me! Say hello to my masterpiece! The game would also offer branching paths as well as multiple endings. The team was short on time, so the character designs were done extremely quickly without any rough drafts. The team wasn't too sure how far to take the gore, so certain enemies were cut at the end for being just a bit too controversial. A mixture of motion capture and traditional animation were used for the creatures. The team had tried to get the motion capture team to act like zombies, but they couldn't just nail the performance. They ended up using what was captured and then manually modifying each character to make them appear more zombie-like. Motion capture was still used entirely on certain things, such as the bosses. The game would feature an end-of-level boss as well as the big bad at the end of the game. The sound effects and especially the excessive amount of voices would play a big part in the story unfolding before your eyes. Sophie! You... you must stop Kyrian, or else something terrible will happen! Sophie! According to Mr. Rhoda, the Model 2 hardware had a fixed amount of memory and the dialogue took about half of that space. Nobody on the AM team could speak English, so when it came time to pick a name, the team simply used horror-themed Japanese phrases that looked cool when translated to English even if they didn't make any sense. A couple of the titles considered were The Horror Show and The Deadly Dead. The developers knew that for markets such as Germany would require that the blood and gore be toned down. They built in an option for operators to change the color of the blood to green, purple, blue, and the standard red. 
the House of the Dead, emerged from its crypt and debuted in the arcades in 1996. As the story goes, Dr. Curian, the director of the DBR Corporation, accidentally unleashes biologically engineered creatures upon his staff at the Curian Mansion on December 18, 1998. A couple of days later, AMS agent Thomas Rogan and his partner G arrive at the mansion after receiving a phone call from DBR researcher Sophie Richards. Upon arriving at the site, Sophie is kidnapped by the hanged man, so it's up to you to infiltrate the mansion, killing the various creatures all while trying to rescue your fiance Sophie in the process. This is a one or two player on rail light gun game in which you have to aim and shoot at the slumbering undead in a timely fashion. Both characters use pistols which hold six rounds in each magazine. Similar to other light gun games, you have to shoot outside the screen to reload. The game consists of four long chapters or levels in which you have to blow away the various creatures rescue researchers, and shoot random objects for bonus items. Your health is represented by flaming torches and one torch is removed every time an enemy attacks you or a hostage is shot. If you lose all of your health points, the game is over but you can continue. It is possible to earn extra hit points by rescuing researchers and collecting first aid kits that are hidden throughout the levels. Other items to be picked up include hopping gold frogs and coins which award points. If you do rescue every researcher, a secret room is unlocked filled with bonus items in the final chapter. As I mentioned, the game is filled with branching paths where the player is placed in numerous situations in which their action or inaction will have an effect on the gameplay. For example, in the opening stage, a hostage is about to be thrown from the bridge. If you manage to save the hostage, you can enter the house directly through the front door. However, if you fail to rescue the hostage, you are redirected to an underground route through the sewers. This game is extremely gory with you not only able to put them away with a well-placed headshot, with a lot of times eyeballs popping out of the skull, but you also get to dismember the bodies as well. Creatures will oftentimes have holes punched completely through them, bones protruding from their bloody stumps, and more. A well-placed headshot will oftentimes see an eruption of blood erupt from the neck cavity of the creature. Pretty grisly stuff and pretty cool. The story is told through spectacular cutscenes and a whole bunch of dialogue. People have been critical about the not-so-top-shelf voice acting, but I thought it was fine and it really gives off a nice B-movie vibe. At the end of each chapter is a massive boss that you have to take care of in order to proceed in the story. At the end of each game, you are given a rank showing how well you did. The overall goal of the game is to receive a score that is above 62,000. There are three different endings in the game which really increases the replay value along with the branching paths, which a lot of times are activated by the obvious such as shooting the arrow button on an elevator or something else that is completely hidden. If you want to score high in this game, the best thing to do is aim for the head on every creature that you shoot. This will give you the highest point value, but keep in mind, if you are bitten or hit by one, you lose 100 points. Make sure you rescue all of the scientists, as each one is worth 400 points. If one is killed by a creature, it's negative 100, and if you accidentally kill a scientist yourself, it's negative 200. You should also play alone, so you don't have a partner you are splitting the points with. The frogs that you find give you a fantastic 1,000 point bonus, but they are quite rare. 
The creatures themselves are varied and are not just palette swaps to save memory. By my count, not including the bosses, there are around 25 unique individuals that you have to dispose of. As I mentioned, the game is split up into four chapters of creature killing goodness. You will have to explore the dark and dank mansion and learn its secrets all the while keeping your head attached to your shoulders. The mansion is huge, but the entire game can be completed between 30 and 40 minutes, which is just the perfect amount of time for this type of game. The chapters are as follows. Chapter 1, Tragedy. Chapter 2, Revenge. <laughs> Chapter 3, Truth. And the final chapter, The House of the Dead. The bosses themselves are a whole different story. These are massive mamma jammas, but each one is equipped with a weak point. Before the start of each fight, pay attention to the card that pops up detailing the boss you are about to fight, which shows you exactly where their weak point is. The bosses are named after major arcana tarot cards and are as follows. Chariot Type 27 Hanged Man Type 41 Hermit Type Six Eight Zero Three. The big bad of the game, the one who was behind it all, the magician who was type zero. After defeating the Magician, one of three ending sequences are shown depending on number of hostages rescued and the overall score that you achieved. There is no way to know what your score is during gameplay, however, there is a cheat to do so which will enable you to view your score while you are playing.
Everything is over. I have nothing more to lose. However, I must go on. Goodbye, Curian. Farewell, Sophie. Buried in the game's files were some unused data and textures for Mr. G and Sidney. Also, for some strange reason, Sylvester Stallone's face was found but clearly was never used in the final game. The characters went through a number of changes and we have some early concept artwork which shows a character by the name of Mr. Happy. He was a scrapped invisible man type that eventually evolved into the character of Dr. Curian. The original cabinet design for the arcade game featured two monitors in which the player would stand in the middle of for more immersion. They also ended up recycling Virtual Cop light guns so there wouldn't be any issue with the guns having a more realistic look. A prototype was found and dumped a couple of years back which featured some differences in the voice acting and some of the stage layouts so if you're curious download it and check it out for yourself. The graphics are fantastic with all the blood and gore you could hope to achieve for in a 1996 arcade game. The polygons are nicely detailed with smooth animation all throughout. The mansion is absolutely huge and it's a lot of fun exploring it all the while killing anything that doesn't have a pulse. With about 10 minutes of cutscenes throughout the game, the story pulls you in as it unfolds before your eyes. A game this violent would of course have its fair share of detractors with Indianapolis passing an ordinance that required violent video games to be placed behind a partition so it could not be seen by the general public. A minor would have to be accompanied by a parent or guardian to play it. Appeal Judge Richard Posner thoroughly reviewed the game and made his decision noting that the House of the Dead depicts zombies being killed flamboyantly with over-the-top violence and was not considered obscene. Of course, controversy creates cash, so along with the fantastic gameplay, excellent graphics, and a unique storyline, this game turned out to be an all-time classic. The game was a smash hit selling over 8,500 arcade cabinets, with 7,000 of those being sold overseas. This game spawned a franchise that is still going strong to this day. If you ever needed an excuse to welcome in the zombie apocalypse, then look no further than 2003's House of the Dead movie. This isn't a video game pretending to be a B-movie zombie flick. Oh no, this is a straight-to-video B-flick attempting to be a real movie. This currently sits on IMDB with a 2.1 out of 10 rating, so you know this is going to be some quality stuff. I haven't seen acting like this since I was on my honeymoon. The storyline has been changed dramatically even though it's a prequel to the first game. In the movie, 
The zombie outbreak takes place on an island and not at the mansion as found in the first game. The movie turns into a typical 80s slasher film filled with nudity and violence and strays much too far from the source material. Mr. Oda does appear somewhere in the film as a creature. In 2019, development was started on the House of the Dead remake for the Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. This was brought to us by Megapixel Studio, but everything had to be done essentially from scratch as Sega had lost the source code for the arcade game. To be honest, there were a few bugs when the game was first released and people didn't like the new soundtrack and also no official light gun support. With that being said, everything is now in HD and the new graphics and blood and gore look fantastic. There have been a few unofficial patches released for the Steam version including one for support for a couple of different light guns. Another patch that was released restores the original soundtrack as well. With the game this successful, the merchandise was out in abundance, including various t-shirts. But my favorite of all the items produced would have to be the toy line that came from Palisades Entertainment. The sculpts on these figures are great, and even though a second series was designed, sculpted, and painted, it was cancelled due to poor sales of the first series. Wreck-It Ralph featured a number of celebrity video game cameos and the House of the Dead even got in on the action. Zombie is clearly based on Cyril right down to his hypnotic eyeballs and his horseshoe hairline. After these messages, we'll be right back. At the time, there were only two conversions produced, one for the Sega Saturn and one for the PC. Let's take a look at the Saturn version first, which doesn't look too bad but clearly nowhere near as good as the arcade original. The polygons are lower in count and also a bit on the ugly side, but since this is a creature feature game, it works out pretty good. Everything from the arcade game has been included, but there are a couple of different modes as well. You have the standard arcade mode, which is pretty much a direct port of the quarter munching coin op. Then you have the Saturn mode, which is virtually identical to the arcade mode, but it does offer a number of different characters for you to choose from. The characters have different attributes, such as the degree of damage the bullets are inflicted upon the creatures life bar, the time it takes to reload, etc. There is also a boss mode which allows you to fight only, surprise surprise, the four different bosses all right in a row. Aside from the downgrade in quality of the graphics, there are some mid-level loading that takes place. Thankfully, the light gun is supported in this version, but keep in mind you need an actual CRT to use it. When the developers were working on this title, Sega had dropped off a hard drive with assets from the arcade game. The developers discovered a folder of unused content that was deemed too controversial for use in the arcade game. These included a marble-skinned large man wearing a bondage mask and latex pants, similar to what I wore on my honeymoon. There was another character by the name of Cindy who wore a corset and swung a large hammer. Aside from the obvious drop in graphic quality, 
this game turned out really well and was a lot of fun to play on the Saturn at the time with the gun back in the day. The PC version was released about six months after the Saturn version and was pretty much identical as far as content goes. One big difference is that there is no light gun support, but you can use a mouse which makes hitting those nasty creatures just a bit easier than using a standard gamepad. The textures are now HD quality and compared to the Saturn version looks smooth like butter. The frame rate is also a bit higher in this version, and the stages no longer have any loading breaks in the middle of a level. Sound effects and music are what you would expect from a CD-based game, which means they are virtually arcade perfect and that includes the less than stellar voice acting. The House of the Dead 2 was released in the arcades in 1998 and was later ported to the Dreamcast and PC the following year. It was released as part of a two-pack along with House of the Dead 3 for the Dreamcast, but the original game was not included because of Sega losing the source code. Mr. Oda would only agree to work on the follow-up if he was given six months to a year to develop it. He was also excited about the brand new sexy Naomi hardware board, which was much more powerful than the Model 2 board that was used for the original game. The original title of the game was The House of the Dead 2 Original Sin. The game must have gone to church before its release because the original sin was dropped. Similar to the first game, this is a one or two player light gun game that picks up about a year after the events of the first game. This time it follows two AMS agents by the name of James and Gary who are investigating a zombie outbreak in Italy. They have to find the source of the attack while also locating the missing Agent G. The graphics have obviously been upgraded and the game has even more blood and gore than its big brother. The textures are insanely detailed with lots of color and extremely smooth animation. The game takes place across six chapters and once again includes branching paths but this time it's expanded upon greatly. One difference comes at the end of each level when you are graded on your accuracy. This doesn't appear to have any major impact on the gameplay though. For some strange reason, the voice acting is even worse this time around. The dialogue is wooden and stiff like it's straight from a hostage video asking for ransom. Some people were critical of it, but I didn't mind it as once again it felt like a true B-movie experience. Hurry! Go! Thanks, G. I don't want to die! My God. Thank you for rescuing me. Geez, bloodstains. Thank you. Please take this. James! Amy! Harry! Thank God you're all right. What the hell's going on in this city? Don't know, but it's very similar to the 1998 Curian case. That case? James, go and prevent a confusion in the city. Okay. Let's meet at Sunset Bridge. We're counting on you, James. No more fooling around. The six chapters that you encounter are a prelude.
मारे darkness Are you all right James? Yeah, I'm hanging on. Despair Power still coming. This the Colosseum? Dawn? And final chapter. The bosses have had their gruesome factor turned up and include judgment. Hierophant. Tower. Strength. Magician. And Emperor. Once again, you get three different endings depending on how well you did. Gold men! Friends, it is not over yet. Is that all you have to say? In time, a successor will come. Farewell, friends. It's finally over. Goldman, I don't care if a successor comes or not. I'll go on fighting. As long as we have the will to live. Thank you. This game is fantastic and takes everything that was great about the first game and cranks it up in all departments. Except for that pesky dialogue, but I can live with it. It's one of my favorite games in the series. The game was so popular that it received a number of spin-offs with the first one being Zombie Revenge in the arcades in 1999 and released later that year for the Dreamcast. Initially, the game was called Blood Bullets, The House of the Dead Side Story, but then that was changed to Zombies Nightmare, Zombie Zone, and then finally Zombie Revenge. The game is notable in that it actually refers to the creatures as zombies. The game was also developed in 1998, which was just after Marvel Comics trademark expired on the word zombies, 
so that could have played a role in the name change as well. The gameplay is a cross between Die Hard Arcade and the House of the Dead, which allows two players choosing between three government agents all with different attributes. You take on the role of either Stick, Linda, or Rakia, who are AMS agents who are sent out to investigate a zombie-infested Woodside City. Their goal is to eliminate all the zombies and track down the mysterious leader known as Zed. The game takes place across seven chapters or episodes in which you have to use weapons such as your fists of fury, pipes, stun guns, grenades, machine guns, flamethrowers, and more. Some of the chapters you encounter are isolated area, Enigma. The Gates. And the House of the Dead which actually takes place at the Curian Mansion. A few of the bosses you encounter are UDS-03, Headlands. UDS-07 or Nickel. UDS-06B. Black Magician Type 1. There are two different endings depending on how well you did. The graphics look pretty good, although not quite as detailed as House of the Dead 2, although it is running on the same hardware. The voice acting has been improved slightly, but that's not really saying too much. If you enjoyed games like Die Hard and Love Zombies, you should really check this game out. The year 1999 brought us an extremely wacky spin-off, the likes of which we haven't seen since the Jeffrey Dahmer cookbook. <laughs> Typing of the, dead. the Typing of the Dead was released first in Japanese arcades and then later for the Dreamcast with a keyboard attachment and for the PC. The storyline from the House of the Dead 2 was used as the basis for this game, but obviously some changes were going to be made. The game is still an on-rail shooter, but rather than use your giant gun to blow away those pesky creatures, you now have to type words or short phrases to take them out. The further into the game you go, the more complex the words and phrases become. There are also little challenges that pop up such as killing 10 creatures in 30 seconds. The bosses have also been included as well and you need to type a short phrase to inflict a small amount of damage on them. There are three goofy endings that will occur which words cannot do justice. Gold men. Friends, it is not over yet. Is that all you have to say? In time, a successor will come. Farewell, friends. Go
old men. Friends, it is not over yet. Is that all you have to say? In time, a successor will come. Farewell, friends. Farewell, friends. The game is a lot of fun to play, and although the creatures are still trying to rip you limb from limb, there is still a good amount of humor all throughout the title. If you are starting to get rigor mortis in your fingers or just want to learn how to type, you should definitely check this game out. Another wacky spin-off came in the form of the Pinball of the Dead for the Game Boy Advance which was released in 2002. Once again the storyline is based off of the House of the Dead with the whole creature motif being put to good use. You start the game with three balls, or lives in a video game sense, and the game is split up into three different tables. In order to access these, you have to beat the bosses in order which will unlock the next table. The three tables are Wandering Table which is based on the early level of the House of the Dead 2. <laughs> Movement Table which looks to take place inside of Goldman's headquarters. And the final table is the cemetery. If you've ever played pinball before, then you know what to expect here. You have to hit the various targets and make some skill shots and score as many points as possible. As with bowling video games, if you don't have the physics just right, the best graphics in the world won't be a darn thing. The same can be said of a successful pinball title which is getting the ball to bounce around realistically. The game does a great job of this with the ball ping-ponging around like a crackhead looking for a fix. The graphics are fantastic and I would have loved to have played a real pinball game like this on an actual machine back in the day. The most dangerous enemy mankind has ever encountered. The House of the Dead 3. Had enough yet? Along with 2002's Pinball of the Dead, we were treated to the House of the Dead 3, which was released initially in the arcades, but would later go on to be ported to the Xbox, PlayStation 3, Windows, and the Nintendo Wii. Early in development, the team were going for a more cartoony style with the use of cell shading which I think looks kind of cool. It is a big departure from the original two games so perhaps this is why it was dropped. The game takes place across six levels or chapters and it's a one or two player simultaneous shooter. 
This time, the story takes place in the year of 2019 and revolves around the disappearance of Rogan. His daughter Lisa and G, no, not Lisa G, head to a factory where Rogan was last seen hoping to uncover the truth. The gameplay is very similar to its predecessors as it's an on-rail shooter in which you have to dish out hell on earth to the various creatures. Your weapon of choice is the extremely cool pump-action shotgun which holds six bullets at once, similar to the weapons in the previous games. The nice things about these shotguns is that you can hit multiple enemies at once. The Xbox version, when using the gun, doesn't require you to shoot off-screen as the weapon will reload automatically. One major change is that you no longer have to rescue civilians Instead, using something called a partner rescue, where one player character is cut off and trapped by the creatures requiring you to save them. If you are successful in this, you get a bonus life, but even if you fail, there is no penalty. Barrels and various other objects can be destroyed to reveal bonus items which will award either extra lives or increase the player's score. Branching paths have also been modified just a bit, making it easier to choose which way you want to go. A new ranking system was introduced in which players are ranked in how fast they can destroy the creatures ranging from excellent to good, faster, and twin shot. This is represented with a letter grade at the end of each stage. Thanks to the new Chihiro arcade board, which was based on Xbox architecture, the graphics look fantastic with clean, crisp textures which makes for extremely gory visuals. The chapters you encounter are reminiscent Chasing Shadows <laughs> Bewilderment <laughs> Sensory Chaos <laughs> Ultimate Challenge Wheel of Fate. The bosses are large and in charge, but they now have a smaller meter beneath their health bar. This meter must be emptied at repeated shots at the weak points of the boss. It features the likes of Death Type 0011, <laughs> Fool Type 0028. Sun type eight eight three three and a 
Wheel of Fate type 0000. zero, zero, zero. This game even upped the ante when it came to multiple endings and offered four different ones. Tell me, how am I supposed to live the rest of my life? What are you talking about? You've got your whole life ahead of you. What life do I have? <laughs> What's wrong? Lisa. Could you wait for a second? This place was my whole life. Goodbye, Father. I won't let your efforts go to waste. If humans go down the wrong path again, I'll come back to this old place. Sorry. Let's go. It appears that he didn't understand its true purpose. <laughs> After a three-year hiatus, The House of the Dead 4 was released in the arcades in 2005. The story is set in the year 2003, taking place three years after what occurred during The House of the Dead Part 2. The game revolves around two AMS agents, James Taylor and his partner, Kate Green. The duo are gathering information on the lower basement floor of the AMS headquarters in Italy. An earthquake suddenly occurs and they are trapped in the basement with the walls slowly collapsing. They soon discover that there are undead creatures in the building so they have to gather all the weapons they can find, destroy everything in sight, and learn about the mysterious Goldman case. Once again, this is a one or two player on rail light gun shooter, but this time the standard gun is a mini Uzi fully automatic submachine gun. The arcade version had motion sensors built in which forces you to shake off enemies if they get too close or try to bite you. Similar to previous games, you have to shoot away from the screen in order to reload. The player is also equipped with grenades and initially you start off with three. It is possible to earn more grenades by shooting destructible objects. Your character can hold a maximum of five. Branching paths also make the return which greatly increases the replay value. Changing up the gameplay just a bit. The creatures now have two different attacks which include the regular damage found in the previous games, but they also have a push maneuver which knocks the player off their feet leaving you vulnerable. You need to shake the controller back and forth to get back on your feet before the creatures attack you. The game rewards you with accuracy and consecutive headshots which ranks from good to excellent to amazing and finally perfect. You are also graded on your performance at the end of each level and the higher the grading, the more bonus lives you can attain. As found in previous games, there are hidden bonus items to pick up to increase points such as coins, but extra lives can also be found as well. Similar to the House of the Dead 3, this game featured the introduction of Sega's new arcade hardware, the Lindbergh which boasted more realistic graphics and higher performance. This was also one of the first games to use a high definition 62 inch 16 by 9 widescreen. 
There were a couple of other models available as well, including a 52-inch 4x3 model, as well as a 23-inch CRT 4x3. But the 62-incher was the Mac Daddy, at least until the House of the Dead 4 special came along. The graphics are absolutely phenomenal, with disgustingly rotten corpses waiting in every room to take you out. Up to 30 creatures can be seen on screen at the same time. This game featured the most varied set of creatures at that time. Everything has a realistic look to it thanks to the more powerful hardware and the animation is silky smooth. The bosses are massive and once again take up the entire screen in certain cases. The levels you encounter are escape. Lost. Emptiness. Despair. Reunion. And hope. The bosses you encounter are Justice Type 0053. The Lovers, Type 6805. The Empress, Type 1210. Temperance, Type 0483. The Star, Type 0001. And The World. Similar to The House of the Dead 3, this game features four different endings depending on your ranking. Can't beat him. You must close Pandora's box now or never. James, what are this you? is our last hope. This will stop it. Kate.
James. What should I do? Ah, yes, there is one thing I forgot. The human race has not been eliminated. Travel north. The gameplay is fantastic, and it's one of those games that needs to be played in an actual arcade to get the full experience. After these messages, we'll be right back. この冬、日本全国にオカンが走る。オカンが走る。オカンが走る。オカンが走る。オカンが走る。オカンが走る。オカンが走る。オカンが走る。オカンが走る。オカンが走る。オカンが走る。オカンが走る。オカンが走る。
As each creature approaches, panels with Japanese text appear over them. The player must write the English translation with the stylus. Successfully doing this will kill the creatures who yells out the English phrase that was just entered. I have played around with this game a little bit, but not a whole lot as the majority of the text is in Japanese. Banana. Melon. And now for something just a little bit different. House of the Dead EX was released exclusively in the Japanese arcades in 2009. This is another spin-off that strays from the main storyline of the House of the Dead and sees a young zombie couple by the name of Zabio and Zabiko attempting to escape from their captivity so they can live out their nights rotting together peacefully. This is a one or two player light gun game which also uses foot pedals. Other than the obvious differences in the art style, the gameplay has been completely changed in which you play a number of minigames similar to Namco's Point Blank with boss battles in between. There are over 25 minigames to play through on various branching paths including zombie juggling, zombie catcher, and of course, zombie bowling. I could never get this up and running under emulation, so I haven't been able to try it out personally. From what I've seen though, it looks to be a lot of fun, especially with two players. In 2009, the very first dedicated home console title was released for the Nintendo Wii, which was the House of the Dead Overkill. It was also the first main entry into the series that was not developed by the original team. Initially released for the Nintendo Wii, a PlayStation 3 extended cut which featured HD graphics was released in 2011. The game is set in the year 1991, seven years before the events of the first game and sees a rookie AMS agent by the name of G and Detective Isaac Washington as they investigate various disappearances and a creature outbreak in Bio City, Louisiana. The game takes a more direct approach to its humor, basing itself on exploitation movies of the 1970s and the Grindhouse films. This includes strange visual gags, intentionally bad voice acting, and more. It also uses the same salty language from those types of films, and it even held the Guinness World Record for the most profane video game of all time with 189 uses of the F-word. The story unfolds through various cutscenes similar to previous games in the series. The same on-rails gameplay is carried over with some minor tweaks to the formula. For example, you now have a selection of guns and are able to customize its loadout. Before each chapter, you can switch between guns via the Wiimote. You can also purchase additional guns from the gun shop using cash obtained by completing chapters and in-game challenges. There are eight weapons in total including a shotgun, assault rifle, and a crossbow. A combo system was also added that awards the players bonus points and multipliers for consecutive hits. The game also features a bullet time style mode which is titled Slow Mofo and if that wasn't enough, you also have grenades at your disposal. There are seven chapters in the game, with each one being presented as a movie in the Grindhouse style. Chapter 1 is Papa's Palace of Pain. Ballistic Trauma Carney This is bad? You seen the prices? I'm gonna make your fucking 
fucking side split. Scream train. Fetid waters. <laughs> Jailhouse judgment. Finally overkill. The bosses you will encounter are Jasper. Dreamer. Nigel and Sebastian for a little two-on-one -on -one action. Crawler. Lobber Brutus and Mother. As I mentioned, an extended cut with extra content was released for the PlayStation 3 in 2011 that supported the Move controller. Once again, another one of my favorite games and I really do love the Grindhouse style. In 2013, Sega released the Typing of the Dead Overkill for Windows. This follows the same pattern as the previous Typing of the Dead, but there were a number of DLC packs that were also released. Twenty eighteen saw Sega release the fifth entry into the main series entitled House of the Dead Scarlet Dawn. This was released exclusively into arcades, and thus far no home conversions have ever appeared. This takes place three years after the House of the Dead Four, and it follows AMS agents Kate Green and Ryan Taylor who is the younger brother of James Taylor as they set out to uncover a bio-terror threat at Scarecrow Manor. Once again, this is a one or two player on-rail shooter in which your standard issue weapon is a machine gun. One welcome addition is that guns will automatically reload once empty. Thanks to the more advanced hardware, up to 200 creatures can appear on screen at once in a multitude of different flavors. Thankfully, there are first aid kits hidden all throughout the levels, usually indestructible background objects. Similar to previous games, you are measured on accuracy and headshot count, which will give you bonus lives at the end of the level. The game also features branching paths, although not quite as intricate as previous games. 
The creature push mechanic also makes its return in which they will overwhelm you and knock you to the ground. You have to shoot the surrounding enemies within a certain time limit otherwise you will lose a life. Also littered throughout the game, there are events in which you have to shoot a target on a creature or object within a short time. Before each level, you can select two limited use items in addition to your default machine gun. Some of the weapons on offer are a shotgun, gatling gun, flamethrower, laser, and a rocket launcher among others. The game is set up as five chapters with chapter zero being a prologue which is Scarecrow Manor. Kate and Ryan. Player one dead. That's a little much. Stay back, you're coming. <laughs> Homo sapiens. Pandora's box. Stay and a glimmer of hope. The bosses you encounter are chariot. Over there, let's go. Kick your feet on. High priestess. Player one dead. Hanged man. And Moon. There are also four different endings you receive depending on your performance. No doubt, James helped you because of your bravery. Oh, it's too bright for sleep. It's impossible to change a predefined future. This game is awesome, from the graphics, to the sounds, to the weapons. I do know what did appear at certain arcades here in the States as I saw it at a Dave & Buster's. If you ever see this game out in the wild, you might want to drop a few quarters because who knows how long it will be out there. The House of the Dead Scarlet Dawn was so popular it spawned a full-size attraction dubbed, what else? The Attraction, which was an exclusive ride at the Joypolis Arcade in Yokohama, Japan. 
This is a theater type ride with seats up to 12 players simultaneously that includes vibrating seats, air effects, surround sound, and ultra large LED displays. A number of mobile games have been released over the years, including the House of the Dead Nightmare, the House of the Dead Mobile, and the House of the Dead Overkill The Lost Reels. For all you gambling addicts out there who would sell your mother for a tin spot, keep your eyes peeled for the House of the Dead slot machine. The creatures have made a number of cameos over the years infecting other games such as Sega's Superstars Tennis where the Carrion Manor is a playable court. There is also a mini game in which you have to fend off oncoming creatures. It was one of the various minigames found in Sega Superstars which utilized the PlayStation Eye Toy. You have to move your body back and forth to attack zombies like you are grooving on LSD. The Curian Mansion is also a playable track in the racing game Sonic and All-Star Transformed. I'm sure there are others out there so if I missed any let me know in the comments down below. The House of the Dead franchise has been going strong since 1996 and it's still one of my favorite light gun games to play. If you ever wished for the zombie apocalypse and felt the need to decimate the undead, be sure and give this game a shot. You won't be sad you did. If you enjoyed this video be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also. If you would like to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. If you would like to contribute but not sign up for my Patreon, you could always use the donate button up above. Thanks everybody for watching.